A while back, I did a series of videos uh, that eventually became one of my most, I don't know, popular and possibly controversial series. Uh, it was called Atheism versus India, where I sort of started from the premise that um, Western New Atheism, or whatever you want to call this uh, Dawkinsian, Hitchensian stuff that's come along in the last few years or the last decade or so, um, where I said that it, it, it basically overemphasizes the, um, the Abrahamic faiths. In particular, um, Christianity and Islam get the lion's share of the criticism, and it's just generally assumed that anything to do with religion is one of these two. Um, although, to be fair to the quote-unquote new atheists, they generally do say, look, we don't we don't really have as much of an issue with the Eastern faiths for, and, and are they really faiths, really, um, as as we do with the Abrahamic ones, because, well, I guess it's just that they don't seem to interfere with our lives, our day-to-day -day lives here in the West, as much as the other two big ones do, um, Christianity and Islam. Um, but I still po posited the challenge, or posed the challenge, what would you make of, say, Hinduism, Mr. Hitchens or Mr. Dawkins? What would you make of Buddhism? What would you make of Jainism? What would you make of Taoism? What would you make, although Taoism isn't strictly an Indian faith, but it's got huge elements of Indic thinking in it. Um, what would you make of Sikhism, even? Um, these are all Indic-based faiths. You would, I guess some people would call them Dharmic faiths. Um, and again, even faith is a misnomer, and even calling Hinduism Hinduism is often said to be a misnomer. Um, how would you approach these things? Well, it's really hard to <clears throat> come to grips with them. So what I tried to do was I tried to um, zero in on what I believe, or what seem to be the core concepts of all these things, like karma, samsara, uh, I guess prakriti, matter. Um, it uh, could include things like uh, bhakti even. It could include things like um, uh, the actual nature of death, the nature of consciousness, the nature of the universe, the ultimate nature of everything, the nature of matter, the nature of energy, the nature of emotion. Um, the uh, positioning of us versus the phenomenal universe and really ultimately is there any difference is there any differentiation between being and non-being all these things are thoroughly dealt with uh, in the Indic philosophy system faith, whatever you want to call it um, and I don't really think that the modern sort of atheistic Sort of, I would call it even a, a slightly dumbed down type of atheism, which seems to be the, the current sort of mainstream atheist thinking, at least the type that I'm familiar with, doesn't seem to be either interested or capable of <clears throat> coming to grips with Indian philosophy, or I wouldn't even call it Indian, Eastern philosophy or faith thinking, whatever you want to call it. I think I might revisit that. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and looking back on it, it was, a few themes came out. I really irritated a lot of people who had actually liked me up to that point, uh, because I originally got involved in um, in YouTube to denounce what I see as the excessive Islamophobia that's creeping into our society, and I still think that, it, that that's happening. Um, but I kind of went on a little aside and dealt with atheism versus India and all kinds of things happened a lot of people got really angry with me um, I uh, I drew the ire of people that strike me as slightly Hindu nationalist or perhaps extreme in some cases whereas I um, was constantly gratified and am to this day by Indian people who you know or Chinese people they've come along as well or uh, other adherents of what we would call the non-Abrahamic belief systems current in Asia, 
They said, yeah, you've kind of got it right here. You've done at least a bit of research. You've figured out at least some of it and how really, in spite of the fact that a huge number of the adherents of Hinduism or Taoism or Buddhism or whatever tend to just believe things blindly like everybody else does, there's a small amount of hard philosophy in there. And it's sort of camouflaged. It's hidden inside of the general mass of multi-armed, multi-headed gods and uh, and uh, things like that. Um, you know, the chanting of mantras or stuff like that. Um, and mantra chanting is, in and of itself, a fascinating thing to explore. Are you actually chanting a mantra to God, or are you actually doing something to cause vibrations inside your own body, which helps, helps you to manipulate your central nervous system, which enables you to focus your mind and body? <laughs> What, what What is a mantra? What does it do? Is it a voice going up to Lord Shiva when you chant Om Nam Shivaya? Or is it uh, a uh, just a bunch of syllables that repeated over time will have the effect of concentrating your mind? Um, opinion is divided to this day, even in India. Some people say that it actually does actually affect the phenomenal universe. Whereas other people say, no, it's just a means of concentrating the mind. And both people would consider the other guy just as Hindu as he is. Um, things like that. Um, the double-sided nature of it all fascinates us, fascinates me. And I wouldn't even say the double-sided nature, it's the multifaceted nature of it. Even belief itself is unclear. In, uh, in uh, Or epistemology itself it becomes unclear after a certain point in, in, in the Eastern... Uh, scheme of things. So I think I'm going to revisit those. I'm going to revisit the whole subject and uh, do a few videos on that because, uh, again, it is a subject that's dear to my heart. I don't believe in anything. None. Nothing. Zero. Um, any Anybody comes to me with anything, they, any idea they want to sell me on, I say, prove it. End of story. Well, <clears throat> you can approach the Indic faiths that way, or the Indic belief systems or philosophies that way, 99 times out of 100, they will just tell you that you have to just believe it. You see it and you believe it. That, too, is part of the Indian mind. Um, but people who are cursed with a Western skeptical turn of mind, like I am, um, instead of just getting sort of as turned off by it all as I've become by say, Christianity, uh, I tend to delve a little bit deeper into it because I just get the strangest feeling, and this shouldn't come as a surprise because the East are generally much older civilizations than ours, that there's a lot more to this, that there's a lot more egg-headery to the Eastern way of approaching the universe than the Abrahamic way. We'll see where it goes. <laughs>